the digital transformation of your recipe book. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Bernard Lowes, co-founder and science director at Food Pairing. Welcome, Bernard. Yeah, thanks for having me. What does Food Pairing do, and why did you decide to start the company? Well, um, we started a company about 10 years ago, uh, and, and the reason why we wanted to start a company is that we um, really want to support consumers and food companies to shift to more sustainable and healthy lifestyle. But uh, as food is a habit and it's hard to change, we envision that by understanding flavor. We saw that flavor could be an entry point for people to actually make the shift. If we can create food that tastes as nice as your hamburger with French fries, but doesn't contain any meat and is more healthier, then we believe that people will be uh, more willing to actually change their habits. So how does food pairing do that exactly? So to understand the flavor, um, we uh, envision that we need to digitize the flavor and digitization of flavor for us, it's breaking it down into the aroma, the taste and texture um, um, part, uh, particles. So it means that we, for each product that we analyze, that we know what are the aroma components. So if you look at a strawberry, we see the aroma components. We know what are the, the taste molecules that make the taste of the product and how the texture can be changed through preparation methods. So we have created a database of about uh, 3,300 ingredients that contain like uh, carrots, uh, tomato, but then we have different varieties of tomatoes. We know how to make when you prepare it to build uh, recommendations. So based on understanding of food products and what drives consumers to like certain products, we can actually recommend uh, recipes or food products that you never had before. Um, and on the other hand, we can also predict for food companies what new products they should bring on the market because we also understand for a certain target group what drives their liking and appeal for certain products. But it all trickles down to really understanding the flavor and digitizing uh, the flavor. How do you quantify a flavor or an aroma? Do you have a special, any special advanced equipment that you use? Yeah, so um, the way it's generally uh, analyzed aroma is you use devices like GCMS, it's gas chromatography, a mass spectrometer. Um, and what it actually does is it will take, for example, the headspace of a product. So imagine you have a container and I put chocolate in the container, then I can extract the, the headspace from that container, so the aroma molecules into, into the air. I can put it into a very long tube and that long tube will separate the molecules. So at the end of the tube, the same molecules leave at the same time. For example, you can imagine that small molecules will go much faster to that tube than bigger molecules. And then at the end of the tube, there's a device that will um, break the molecules into um, two parts. And that gives a pattern which makes the device recognize what the molecules are. So in our database, we have uh, for, for the strawberry molecules like uh, furaniol, ethylbutanoate, which are uh, aroma molecules with their concentration. And that's one of the, the, the data sources that we use to, to do the recommendations. Explain the odor network. So um, uh, with those uh, more than 8,000 different uh, aroma molecules that we have, for each aroma molecule, we know how it smells like because we gave it to uh, people because we use databases so for example, furaniol, that molecule in, in strawberry, when you smell it, it smells like uh, caramel, sweet, um, depending on the concentration, it can also go like to, um, um, to soy sauce or to more like, um, yeah, to soy sauce. Um, and so for all those 8,000 different molecules, we have the, the, the aroma descriptor, and then we made, uh, we clustered actually the, the molecules in a, in a multi-dimensional space. So we actually know in that space how far 
molecules are from each other or how far uh, aroma descriptors are from each other. So if you ask me, um, um, is um, lemon closer to grass or closer to uh, peach, then the answer is grass because we know how far the aromas are from each other. And so once we created a, a, a real outer space, so we had a huge space where kids uh, from schools around the city where the headquarter is in Ghent, we, 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 we learned them how to smell flavors. And then actually they created spheres like, like this one. So this was uh, uh, created by kids who smelled apple. So they then visualized the smell of apple. They didn't know it was apple, so they had to smell it. And then they visualize it so with colors and also uh, on the inside there are uh, pictures and then we had a huge space and, and, and more than 100 spheres were hanging from the ceiling and the kids and people from Ghent could actually visit this and then smell the flavor and experience what it means for example a green flavor often people don't know what it is but they could smell it and then see it is related to grass um, or to cucumber so they could really understand uh, flavors. How do you use the AI, the artificial intelligence, to create pairings and recipes? Yeah, so we use AI in, 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 in a whole different set of ways. So um, uh, one way we use AI is actually to translate what a, a machine smells into what a human being smells. Because if we get the results from the machines, they have a different sensitivity to the molecules than human beings. Uh, because, for example, uh, an, an aroma like heosmin makes beetroot smells and tastes earthy. Um, but uh, the, the threshold value of heosmin is really low. Uh, like a sotolong smells like maple syrup, it also has a low flavor threshold. So if I add a drop to uh, a swimming pool or to, to a river, you will be able to smell it. But for other molecules like benzaldehyde, which is like uh, almond, the flavor threshold is different. So the, the, the machine doesn't know that because it will say benzaldehyde has this concentration and eosmin has this concentration. But we created uh, algorithms um, and trained models so we can actually translate what the machine smells into what a human being smells because a human will also recombine molecules into a new descriptor. Like, Strawberry, that aroma doesn't exist. But if I combine caramel with grass, coconut, a gra um, a fruity and uh, cheesy notes, if I combine this, I smell strawberry. So the machine had to be trained that this combination actually is strawberry. So that's one way we actually use AI um, in, the food, in the company. And, and you actually create recipes from this data, correct? Indeed, yeah. Um, so because we understand the, the flavor of products, we have actually algorithms that can uh, create completely new recipes. So they know what kind of balance in taste they have to obtain, what is the texture, and they also know what matches because the, the, the basic algorithm where we started about 10 years ago was about predicting what you can combine. Um, so if you combine this all, we can generate um, new recipes and for example we have one spin out company which is a, um, a cocktail robot or a drink robot which is powered by one of those algorithms and um, when the algorithm uh, knows what you like um, and it can be because you fill in a, a questionnaire or he knows your purchase history then it can extract the drivers of liking and it can uh, automatically generate new recipes send it to the cocktail machine and you get instantly a personalized cocktail or flavored water. So that's one example of how we apply uh, the recipe generation. And you offer this to chefs and foodies through your service, right? Yes, but it's, it's much broader than only chefs and, and foodies. We started the company by uh, offering the, pairing, the pairings to, to chefs. So we, we have about 200,000 chefs globally that use some of our technology. Uh, and we, we worked in the past and we still work with, with, with the top end uh, chefs like uh, the Fat Duck, El Bui, Mugorit, Central are some of the, the companies that we also, some of the restaurants we collaborate with. 
but we also work with the big food multinationals because if we can convince them in creating more sustainable and healthy food then it will have directly a huge impact on on the the, the health of, of us of, of, of the consumer so it's a mix of of uh, chefs and and uh, the big global food brands Bernard, you're teaching a whole new era of, of potential foodies and certainly uh, children how to better understand food and maybe just live a little bit longer. Uh, Bernard, if somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about the work that you're doing, how can they do that? I think the easiest way is to go to the website, to foodpairing.com, and you can contact us always by info at foodpairing.com. Sounds good. Thanks again for joining us. And that is Bernard Laus. He's the co-founder and science director at foodpairing.com. If you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.